John here guys, and today we're talking about the Beta FPV Pro 2. Now this is the latest of the never-ending stream of Whoop class crafts that keep coming out, it seems like every other week. And people have been lamenting the durability of the Mobula, but praising its prowess. And I got quite a lot of flack on my video that was happy model we're not happy and perhaps it's partially due to i just even though i fly quite a bit indoors i fly more indoor micros in fact i started off flying this thing indoors now you can see the original baby hawk next to the beta fpv is quite a bit larger i mean and the weight is even more larger but uh this is flyable indoors if you're practiced at it now these products of this class are fairly reliable you might have some issues this camera is pretty much garbage um, even back when it came out but it flew pretty well for the most part aside from maybe a few little tuning issues um, these whoop classes though seem to all have various types of problems either they have terrible canopies terrible cameras terrible range or terrible frames and it just seems to be something that's accepted and a lot of people didn't like that i was pointing out these shortcomings uh, shortcomings of the Mobula. Um, basically thinking that it wasn't fair. Now, is it unfair to, to point out shortcomings? Uh, I don't know, but let's just take a look at how this one compares. Now, I've flown this probably, I just got it earlier today, but I've flown it quite a bit since then, uh, both on 1S and 2S. And I can tell you, a lot of the other reviewers, maybe they had review copies, said that it didn't come with, come with the 1S conversion plug. It does, it's right here. It's this little black thing. It actually comes with two. So right now I have it set up for 1S. Take that out and boom, you're ready for 2S. Um, I've knocked this frame around quite a bit. I've bumped into walls, trying to fly inside my house on 1S and 2S, and the same thing outdoors. I bumped into my car. I tried to land it on my car. It slid off of the roof of my car, fell on the canopy from about, you know, what is that, four and a half feet. Uh, and the canopy's just fine. It has not broken yet. So I do agree that just handling it, I had to take it off um, to put in the other camera mount. This is, it, it actually shipped with the 35 degrees in there, but since I really want to fly this more indoors, I put the 25 degrees. So I had to take this off and I could tell from handling it. It feels like if you ever get candy that comes in like those clear plastic bubbly type things, um, almost like that you would have on a toy box, it feels similarly made to that. It's so fragile. And so I can definitely see how people are crashing them, but um, after about you know 10 or 20 crashes, it's, it hasn't cracked yet. Um, and I can tell you on the Mobula, on the V1 frame, that thing cracked on my very first small indoor crash from like a foot up. Um, so frame integrity, this one definitely wins. Now I did order myself an extra Mobula um, canopy that I'm gonna swap over to so I can have that camera adjustability. The fact that these things are still using this old canopy design, it really is a minus. A lot of people are saying, why aren't you putting that out? Well, I haven't owned one of these beta FPVs yet. Uh, now that I do, that is definitely a shortcoming. The design as mentioned on Kabal's video, the camera just kind of sits in here loosely. And so to keep it from bobbling around, it's it's really just held in with a press fit. There's no kind of actual fixture with screws. It's not in there tight like the Tiny Hawk. Um, so that's definitely an old, antiquated, and poor design that they need to update. I ordered some of the uh, newbie drone ones and a mobile one, so I'll be testing that. I also ordered some of those Cadex EOS 2 cameras. I'll probably be switching that out. Now, when I started flying this initially, I said to myself, why is everyone complaining about the camera? The camera seems actually quite good. Um, and indoors where you have plenty of light, um, I didn't have any problems with it. In fact, I kind of enjoyed it. The, the field of view seems great. Um, the colors were, were nice, uh, but it was once I got it outside, then I could tell what an absolute and utter piece of crap this was, at least um, in low light. So normally I, I fly a lot of stuff at night, you know, on my street, just with the street lights. And the, uh, the Tiny Hawk camera uh, did much better than this. And that's actually kind of a junky camera as well. In fact, I ordered a Cadex EOS 2 for that one as well. So um, what are some of the other complaints besides the camera mounts, the camera and the canopy? Um, and of course the non-adjustable camera angle. When you have something like this that's so versatile that it can fly indoors exceptionally well. And I, let me repeat that, indoors exceptionally well. Now, a lot of people are saying you can fly it indoors on 2S, just cut your throttle curve. You know, I cut my throttle curve down to 60. I tried 75, tried 65, tried 60. 
and it just it was still too much power as soon as you just barely tapped the the throttle you were flying up two or three feet um even if you're super gentle on the sticks but i found on one s i could really get around quite good now you're not going to be saving yourself from any huge dives with that you know small amount of power but you should really ha shouldn't really have to indoors um it, it just flew phenomenally now um let's see on this thing comes with a great out-of-the-box tune all i did was set up my switches um, as you can see i didn't even fix the location of the osd so the osd for some reason they left the default numbers like way in the middle of the screen it should be at the bottom uh, i didn't even i didn't even fix that right so it comes with i think beta flight 4.0 installed which is pretty cool and it works great this tune is far better than the out-of-the-box tiny hawk tune and and you know you guys know on this channel i love the tiny hawk i really 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 do but you know you gotta give the props uh, the props are that the tiny hawk uh out of the box tune was pretty junky it wasn't until i put kebab's tune on there that it really started flying very well um it now while it flies pretty dang good indoors on 1s outdoors you know kind of like the tiny hawk it's just not really that great um i'd say for kind of maybe if you had a tiny little track outdoors this is going to do well but you know the wobble that people describe which is kind of a prop wash if you're if you're descending is extremely unnerving especially on 1s it's far worse on 1s than it is on 2s um i had i, I you know I, I went up high in the sky just to test it out and i was you know pretty scared that it was going to land on top of my roof and, and go out of control the tiny hawk does not seem to have those problems so even though it's not as maneuverable in any type of wind it doesn't have those fluttering uh, you know really severe prop wash type issues um, that this one has now although you know it flies very well i'd almost still maybe give it to the edge of the mobula outdoors it's pretty close a straight punch this is this might be a slightly more powerful but when you're actually moving you know with this 25 degree camera angle it sucks i can't adjust it i need the adjustability of the mobula so you know the people that are still hanging on to to that craft you know i can see why they're they're willing to deal with some of those issues now here's the snapper 7 kind of next to both of those so, so anybody that owns one of these can get a sense of the size of them now man this is a tough one guys i really really do like it though indoors it's i didn't think that anything could possibly rival the tiny hawk and now i'm really thinking like do i need to adjust the tune on this because this seemed more nimble on 1s how could it be and using the 450 milliamp pack that comes with the tiny hawk on here oh man it was just really sensational so locked in you know so i don't know if beta fpv just spent a tremendous amount of time on the tune for this thing and that's why it's so good out of the box i i, I don't know it i'm flummoxed you know i'm perplexed how could something you know be better than a tiny hawk indoors i don't know so who is this for man i think you definitely can't go wrong with this if you don't want to deal with the durability issues of the mobula frames this thing definitely seems to hold its own i've been banging it man and it hasn't skipped a beat um so if you can catch these things on sale if you can get 10 or 15 percent off you know it's 100 bucks now one thing i will say the tiny hawk the mobula all of those things even the snapper 7 all come with a charger this thing does not come with a charger what how can you not come with a charger you're just assuming that this is not someone's first swoop now in my case it's not so i had plenty of other chargers but i think that's a point off you know consider that this also only comes with two packs now since it's a 2s craft that really means that you can't fly a lot with this um, unless you buy a lot more packs. So, you know, just keep in mind the things that the different things come with. You know, I'm very hard on the Mobula, but it did come with a charger and it came with four batteries. So I will say that, you know, to get everything on the same par. So say you had to buy the Mobula two frame, which was also garbage. And then you had to buy the Mobula three frame. You know, you'll, you're, you're up about 110 bucks at that point. But by the time you buy an extra two batteries and a charger for this, you're probably around the same price. So... I did find out of the box this flew much better on 1S indoors and much better uh, indoors in general. So if you're more of an indoor flyer, I think this one might be the one for you. But then, uh, golly, I'd have a hard time um, telling you to get this over the Tiny Hawk. So keep those in mind. Um, I'm going to be flying all of these more and I'm also doing a custom build myself that's going to have a lot of the latest parts and it's hopefully going to be a combination of all of the best attributes of all of these new whoop class crafts um, so let's see if you can build your own and, and have something be better than this this is definitely not a bad option 
Um, I really like these 802 uh, motors. They're they're quite good, and I have a good feeling about them lasting much longer than like the Happy Model ones because these have bearings, like the Emax one. So stick to the ones that have bearings for now. Although I think I am going to try the Mobula motors because they're so cheap uh, once more on that build, but I may switch over to these. So I know I blathered on way too long for this short review, but let me know in the comments what you think. This is interesting times. All the whoops are coming. Uh, I still have the trash can on the way, and then I'm gonna do, be doing the custom one. I'm gonna have a lot of these, you know, basically brand new for sale on the channel. So if you're interested in any of them, hit me up. And as always, check the links in the description below. You can buy this, uh, I believe on airblade.com. And if you use the code Johnny5, you'll get 5% off your order. So. Do that, click the link, support the channel, smash like if you love, whoop class, indoor flying, and subscribe. Thanks, guys.